Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest episode of the Needless Things Podcast, where we talk about toys, movies, music, and all manner of pop culture dorkery. I am your host, Dave, and tonight, this week, we are talking about toys. There's been a lot of toy news out there, and we were actually, uh, this week, going to be doing something else, but you're going to get that episode next week. Uh, And this week, we're just going to kind of look back at the last few weeks of toy news, uh, what's been going on, talk a little bit about collecting in general, and then get specifically into uh, how we prefer our toys displayed and why. And joining me for this episode, our head of research, Ryan Schweck, Uh, he's going to be on for the next two weeks because we've got a very, very special, timely episode coming up next week and it's something I've been wanting to do for a while and it's it's purely by accident that it's ended up being timely just because it's been as often happens with concept episodes put off a couple of times pardon me while I take a little sip of good old Elijah Craig out of my toucan glass that's right it's a toucan a bird toucan Sam if you will or if you won't uh, also, sometimes it's difficult for me to say Elijah Craig rather than Elijah Burke after being familiar with the wrestler for so many years uh, and the bourbon for only one. Oh, well, I get yeah, yeah, about a year, a little over a year, I guess. Uh, and and good old Elijah Craig will be making a big return appearance on the show soon as well because if you remember, around this time last year. We had one of our biggest, craziest, loudest, drunkest episodes ever. It's one of my favorites. And we will be revisiting that concept again very, very soon. Like within the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Okay. So before we get to my discussion with Ryan about toy stuff, there is some toy stuff that's happened since we recorded that discussion, because it is a never-ending deluge of toy news in the world. Because the toy manufacturers have realized that we're all stuck at home, and now is the time to just crank out stuff to pre-order and make sure they get our ha- their hands on our money while we're stuck here before we can get back out into the world and start spending it on things like concerts and picnics and, I don't know, whatever else people do when they're not locked down due to a worldwide plague. Uh, All right. So one thing i got to bring up that actually might have even been announced... No, I guess it was the next day. Uh, Mattel Creations, who I am not a huge fan of because they do... Two kinds of things. Things that I have zero interest in, and things that I feel like I'm going to die if I don't get. And the things I have zero interest in, they produce tons of, and they're available for pre-order for weeks on end. And the things I feel like I'm going to die if I don't get, sell out in 12 and a half seconds. So, Super Shogun Skeletor is a concept that... Honestly, it's kind of obvious because we've seen this sort of cross-pollination of different toy brands many times over the years. Uh, Even with the Super Shogun style, uh, with Super 7 Star Wars Shoguns. Uh, But this is a Super Shogun Skeletor by Mattel from Mattel Creations, which means it's probably going to be like $400, $500. But it looks awesome. i got to give them credit for putting together a really, really cool-looking concept. It does not look like some cobbled-together cash grab. It actually looks very, very cool. Uh, it's, I believe it's mounted on the... Oh, gosh. Okay. There's Mazinger Z. There's Great Mazinga. There's Transor Z, which I believe was the Americanized version of Mazinger Z, but I'm not positive. Uh, I believe... The Super Shogun that I have, which is one of the reproductions that came out uh, like 20-ish years ago, is Mazinger Z. And I don't know if that's a different robot entirely from Great Mazinga or if that's like a, if they're like 
uh, evolved versions of one another or something. I don't know anything about Shogun Warriors. I just missed them when I was a kid. Uh, I know a lot of people my age had them. I didn't. Uh, so I don't really know that much about them other than the Transor Z cartoon, which again was the Americanized version of one of those robots. So I believe the base body for this Skeletor is the Mazinger Z body with a really cool like cowl head and the uh, it, it actually drapes down over the shoulders. It's got the Havoc staff. Uh, just looks really awesome. The colors are fantastic and it's not just like a skull head it's like a robot skull head so it looks very very cool it goes on sale if you're listening to this friday when this episode drops uh it goes on sale today i'm not sure what time because i'm not getting this as awesome as it is there's so much other stuff right now that i'm just really into and and this is too far a field for me I've got many Skeletors. I have, like I said, the Mazinger Z whatever Shogun that I've got. Uh, I just don't need a Skeletor version of that. Funko even did a couple of uh, smaller scale Shogun style robot uh, ro- robots. What am I, my grandmother? Robots uh, of Batman and Gene Simmons from Kiss. Uh, and I've actually got those, and they're really awesome. And and I, I wonder if they went up in value or anything, because I don't remember them being particularly popular, and sometimes that means things can sort of come back around. But I, I wouldn't sell them anyway, because I love them. Uh, so, so anyway, Super Shogun Skeletor coming to MattelCreations.com today. Uh, I also wanted to mention the Mortal Kombat movie comes out today. Uh, I don't see us doing a big review of it because the schedule is pretty tight. But if it's so overwhelmingly awesome that we have to talk about it, I may get the commentary team together and we'll do some kind of special episode. Uh, Because I'll tell you right now, judging from the trailer, it could be that awesome. But it could also be so awful we have to talk about it. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll, we'll, uh, We'll stay tuned for that one. Uh, announced after we recorded the episode, Star Wars Black Series Clone Wars figures on the, oh gosh, Legacy Collection, I believe, backer. Uh, it's it's the Clone Trooper, the white and blue Clone Trooper backer, which is a, a large portion of my collection comes from that era. Uh, I've got a ton of, of modern... I guess, what, 2007 on is kind of when the super articulated stuff really started hitting. Uh, that's I've got a very large collection of Star Wars figures that's that. So that card back, actually, you know, they've already done the Phantom Menace card back, which is great. Uh, Ryan and I talk about that on the show. But this uh, this Clone Wars card back is really sentimental for me but they're black series figures uh it's anakin and obi-wan and as realistic style figures but as they appeared on clone wars and then captain rex and an arc trooper and they look phenomenal they're they're some of the nicest looking black series figures i've seen Uh, i'm i'm not getting them but they just look awesome uh and then finally and what i think is the last piece of news this just happened like two hours ago Super 7, in their ongoing drive to monopolize every cent of my money, teased an image of Samurai Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, uh, I've talked about this. As a matter of fact, we we discussed this a little bit in the show as well. Uh, I was not a huge fan of all the Turtles variations from the original TMNT line. But there were a few that were really great, and Samurai Leo was one of them. Uh, so I wasn't particularly enthusiastic about the possibility that Super 7 might tackle some of these turtle variants, because I'd really rather him get to cool uh, characters like Mondo Gecko and Muckman and uh, Max Ray and uh, uh, Pizza Face. And the sumo guy, whose name I can't remember right now, uh, literally anybody, the, the Napoleon Bonafrog, uh, Genghis Frog, like anybody other than these turtle variants, I'm just not that interested 
in those. But then you throw, and all they showed was an image of his arm and his katana. Uh, is it a katana? If it's if a samurai has it, or is it something different? His arm and his sword. Um, and it got me kind of hyped up, and then it got me thinking, well, hell, I, if they do that, I I wouldn't mind having a samurai Leo in that incredible Super 7 Ultimate style. But if they're going to do that, well, man, I really liked Astronaut Raff, or Space Suit Raff, as I always called him. He, that was a great figure. And then there's, I think it was called Sewer Surfing Mikey in the wetsuit, like the body glove wetsuit. And then I cannot remember what Donatello went along with those. I want to say he was the Donatello in a trench coat, but that seems so boring compared to an astronaut, a samurai, uh, and a surfer. But I really, I think it was that trench coat Donatello uh, that went with that series because those were some of the first, if not the first, turtles in costumes that Playmates put out. Uh, so that's something I'm going to have to keep an eye on. I wouldn't mind it as much if it's like Samurai Leo and Outback Outback Jack. Was that his name? The Kangaroo? Um, like, give me Samurai Leo and then like three other non-turtle characters. And I'm more okay with that uh, than if they're going to hit us with all four turtles in costumes. Which I guess they probably won't do because they didn't do that with the other waves. Each wave had a turtle in it. So, uh, one way or the other, Super 7 has a big announcement coming very soon. Uh, speaking of big things coming soon, you're going to want to tune in to the May episode of Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. Because... There's a lot of G.I. Joe news, rumor, and speculation to discuss. Uh, it's it's going to be another episode where a lot the, the bulk of the episode could end up being just news. Uh, so check that out. Uh, Audible, Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast, is available the first Friday of every month, wherever you get your Needless Things podcasts. Uh, and then finally... Uh, last thing that I wanted to mention, the Needless Things YouTube channel. This week, two, well, one review unboxing that I knew was going to be very special and I was excited about, and that is the new Three Horned Kings Boglins, uh, fresh off a of Kickstarter, available to pre-order now from most of your trusted toy retailers uh and then on monday i reviewed from the loyal subjects their best action figure series buffy the vampire slayer and it's gotten a lot of hits in a very short amount of time very very popular for whatever reason i mean obviously buffy is one of the greatest shows of all time if not the greatest show of all time but i kind of didn't realize this video because I, I'm my mind is boggled by the stats on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Some things that I think are going to be big hits are are 20 views. Some things that I don't really expect to get that much attention are over a thousand. So I I like I don't know. I have no idea the algorithms or how anything works there. Obviously. But uh, I just like reviewing toys, so that's what happens every Monday and Wednesday on the Needless Things YouTube channel. I open and review a toy, and man, did people love the Buffy review. So go check those out. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. Tell your friends about Needless Things, whether it's the podcast or the YouTube channel or both, or our upcoming appearances at, that's right, Dragon Con! Today I submitted my schedule of panels and they were approved. So Dragon Con is currently, uh, you know, I'm sure with many caveats and stipulations and eventualities, but as of now, Dragon Con is moving ahead full steam and we are planning. Uh, more, more to come on that. I don't want to announce anything quite yet, 
But if you've been following Needless Things and the stuff that we do as a family at Dragon Con for any amount of time, you can probably guess some of the things that we're going to be doing. Uh, and this year is going to be just as awesome as any other year if we have anything to say about it. So there you go. Uh, you guys, it is time now to sit back, relax, crack open uh, your own toucan full of Elijah Craig, and enjoy some toy talk with me and Ryan Schweck. Joining me tonight for a big time toy news conversation. Please welcome back to the show our head of research, Mr. Ryan Schweck. Hey, I'm glad to be here tonight talking about something that probably takes up too much of my brain and too much of my bank account. Right, seriously, like I'll basically any any pop culture thing that happens now, I just look at it and I think, well, what are the toys going to look like? Yeah, it really is like movie trailers. Any of it is uh, they're going to make toys out of that and uh, <laughs> what I can and can't afford anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, seriously. Well, that's um, and that's part of what we'll talk about a little bit tonight. But mostly there's been a lot of toy news in the past few weeks because it seems like a few companies kind of dropped their toy fair stuff. Uh, obviously, Hasbro had their hasbro pulse fan fest is that what it was called and the fan fest with yeah we'll we'll talk about that all sorts of stuff yeah uh, but then i also want to check in with mezco and see where we're at with our 112 pre-orders oh god um and j- just a few other things here and there and we'll, we'll just uh see what we end up talking about but the first thing i wanted to bring up and part of what i've been working I, i've done a ton of stuff today i recorded a bunch of video reviews for the needless things, YouTube channel. Uh, but I don't know if the listeners know this, but Boglins are back. If you remember the puppets from the eighties, the like, uh, sort of ghoulish little full hand size puppets with the glow in the dark eyes. Uh, they're back. They're available. Now you can order them from Walmart. They're going to be a big, bad toy store, entertainment earth, basically everywhere. Uh, I know a muck time had their pre-order, uh, link up way early, but they're mm-hmm. shipping now because I backed the Kickstarter for them. And my three, they're three, three horned Kings that are kind of the main ones that are out right now. Uh, those arrived last week, but I pre-ordered one of them for my son just for him to have one from Walmart. And it came just a few days after my Kickstarter stuff arrived. So they're, they're out there. They're on top of this and uh, they're awesome. They're great. The material is much more durable than the eighties ones were. Uh, Did you ever have any of these? Oh yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of them when I was younger and I've gotten two of the new ones. So, and, but you remember the old ones were like, if you've got them now, they're They're sticky. Well, you can, you can wash them off. Yeah. Um, a little dish soap will clean them right up. As a matter of fact, I, I had to, cause I've got, uh, Timothy Clark, one of the creators of the Boglins. Uh, we've known him on the show for years now, and we got some from him before these mass produced ones were coming out and we just pulled them out and they're all sticky. So we just little, little dish soap. I, I recommend Dawn. We'll yeah. clean them up, but the original Boglins, they feel not stable. Mm-hmm. Like they haven't really did. De- well, some of them have deteriorated, but they just don't, f- they feel like something that's 40 years old or whatever. Yeah. I know mine got some like definite, like skinny places in the rubber yeah, to where yeah, your yeah, thumb yeah. would be. And you could kind of see through it a little bit yeah. as time goes by. But I mean, for 40 years, it's, they it's hold it bad. up. Great. Yeah. It's not bad, but uh, yeah. the new ones are made of a completely different material. They actually worked with a lot of different chemical manufacturers to find the right material for these to last forever. And they feel great. They're awesome. Have you opened yours up yet? Uh, yeah. 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 They, they have a nice feel. The eye mechanism Mm -hmm. works just like it always did. Uh, and they, I feel like the detail on them is a little better. I feel like it holds the detail a little bit better. Yeah. I'm really digging those new dark Lord ones too. Yes. uh, Those go up. Was it the skeleton, a pumpkin and a clown or something? It's Blobkin, which is the skeleton. Mm -hmm. Um, 
or I'm sorry, Blobkin is the jack o' lantern, Baga Bones is the skeleton, and Crazy Clown is a completely new one. It's a it's a really creepy looking clown. They all glow in the dark, like the whole Boglin, not just the eyes, and they all go up for pre order on May first. Okay. And, you know, I know you mentioned uh, Tim Clark. I highly recommend following him on social media. I know he has like a big Facebook presence, but he does a lot of like where he shows them and kind of shows the process. And it's really cool to see a creator like that be so involved. Well, back when he was one of the first guests we ever had on the show. And back when he first came on, he said, like, I don't understand why anybody even wants or I was surprised that anybody even wanted to talk to me. This is so weird for me. And now, you know, that was what, six years ago or something. And now it's very common for toy creators Mm -hmm. to be more involved in promoting their products. But, but then it was a weird thing. And I recommend everybody go back and listen to that episode because it's awesome. Uh, Tim has been a, a great friend to the show and always very, very giving with his time for, for our little podcast. Um, so yeah, the, on the needless things, YouTube channel this week, the, I'm, the Boglins review went up Wednesday. Uh, I reviewed, have you seen any of these loyal subjects, best X and figures yet? I think I, I want to say I've seen pictures of them, but I'm not real familiar with them. What are they? They're, uh, you know, loyal subjects do those little vinyl figures that are like articulated. Some of them are blind box. Some of them aren't, mm-hmm. uh, they've, they're like kind of super deformed. Like if you go to Walmart or, I think they're in target also like in the collector section. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm looking them up. I so uh-huh. they've been doing those for years, but now they're doing actual, well, not, not actual. They're doing more standard action figures in a, I don't know what five inch scale is. It's, it's a weird, smaller scale, yeah. but they've got tons of articulation. They come with interchangeable hands and accessories and everything. Like they're basically just smaller versions of like Marvel legends or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I got lightning from big trouble in little China a couple months ago and wasn't real happy with him. And the other day in target, they had Buffy from Buffy, the vampire slayer. And I knew they were doing Angelus and obviously they're going to do a Buffy. I think I just somehow didn't, hadn't seen it. Mm-hmm. So one, you know, I'm a huge Buffy fan. So seeing a new Buffy figure at retail was cool, but seeing any kind of toy at retail is cool because distribution has been the shits lately, Yeah, uh, which we'll talk about right after this. But so I, I grabbed that Buffy and reviewed it and it's, it's weird because it's a, it's a pretty good little action figure, but the likeness is not Sarah Michelle Geller at all. Yeah. I've seen that Buffy one. I think I saw it. I guess it was probably Target. Yeah. And yeah. Was, Target has just started getting these because it was the deal where Walmart had them first for like 90 days and yeah. then other retailers started getting them. Oh, you know what? It might have been Walmart because I do think it was in that little collector's. At first, I saw in that weird back section in electronics. Yeah. Now, yeah. They seem to have moved them to the toy aisle. My Walmart's oh, really? My Walmart's real confused with some things right now. Like <laughs> sometimes there's some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from NECA on the toy aisle. Most of the time they're <laughs> in the back. Sometimes there's a random end cap with 18,000 ultimate super shredders. You know, you just never know where you're going to find stuff. Well, that's what's so wild is that that new super shredder, the repaint one that's like all metallic, it's in the cool looking dark box. Uh-huh. When it first started showing up, I was seeing all over Instagram, people were finding like 20 of those on like filling an end cap. Oh, yeah. And I didn't see them here for weeks. And then I finally found one because I, my goal is to get Kevin Nash to sign it. Like mm. once things get back to normal, he he does lots of horror conventions and wrestling conventions and whatever. So I want to get him to sign it. But I there were two. I finally found them, but there were just two sitting there. It was so weird. Uh, it, Atlanta is awful. Uh, see, my Walmart has probably 30 of those and Gosh. probably the same number of the re-releases of the sets of the four turtles. Yeah, that, that I haven't seen those either. I saw the Foot Soldiers two-pack the other day. They, uh, one of the Walmarts had three of those. I was surprised to see that again. But But I will say this. Regardless of the retailer distribution, uh, I think NECA has been doing a fantastic job of keeping these coming and doing mm-hmm. their best to make sure people can get their hands on them. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the, you know, on their site, they release some of those harder to find animated ones and 
they seem pretty committed to making sure everybody can get this, which is great. That's actually a good segue because that's one of the notes on my list. It was a little further down, but we can go ahead, go ahead and hit it now. Uh, have you seen this NECA Ninja Turtle Fridays that they've been doing the last couple of weeks? No, I haven't watched any of them. Are they videos? Well, okay, so that's two different things. They're every Friday for the past two weeks now. Uh, NECA has put up reissue or pre-orders for reissues of some of the cartoon turtle sets and then a new figure and the first week it was that pizza alien like it's based off the xenomorphs from alien but it's some kind of pizza creature Uh um they put that up two weeks ago or i guess when this episode goes up it'll be three weeks but whatever and then last week they put up a two-pack of mutagen man and ace duck I was going to say, do they just release a new Mutagen Man every week? <laughs> like, Dude, <and> this week? <laughs> it's killing me because I got I got the Super 7, the regular Mutagen Man. And then a few weeks ago, they put up the Inter- Entertainment Earth exclusive glow-in-the-dark Mutagen Man, which Mutagen Man was, uh, he was one of my, the original ones, one of my favorite action figures of all time. Oh, yeah. And then when I saw Super 7 was doing Mutagen Man, that's what got me to collect Super Seven's Ninja Turtles line, mm-hmm. and I collect glow. I mean, glow in the dark stuff is like my. I love it. So when that a- went up, Achilles I was like, heel of toy collecting. It is. It is. So I was like, damn it, I've got a. And the thing about Entertainment Earth, they're not Big Bad Toy Store. They don't have that sweet four dollar flight rate shipping. <laughs> no, they do not. No, not at all. So this is like fifteen bucks added on to the price of this glow in the dark mutagen man. But I'm gonna do it because I got like. I have learned at this point in my life that I cannot tolerate that feeling like such a chump when you miss something. Yeah. Yeah. There it like, I have never regretted a purchase, but I have so many regrets about stuff I have not bought. Oh, that, uh, I've got that Hasbro Sentinel slowly creeping in on my feelings on that. (laughs) Like for first I was like, yeah, I don't need that. I need to spend that money. And the more I see, I'm like, Oh God, I'm going to regret this. None of us got that. Did we? No. Like none of our little chat group. No, nobody got it. Gosh. Um, And I I don't look, it's going to be awesome. It's amazing. But I just like a Sentinel is not, something that I feel like I need to spend that much money to have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I've got the Toy Biz Sentinel and yeah, I do too. It's still great. Like I, you know, a lot of Toy Biz figures you kind of put out to pasture, but that one is still a solid, amazing figure. But when they, they started showing what that new Sentinel does and how the lights work and all that. Oh God. Not that I ever, I mean, I have tons of light up toys that, I push the button when I open it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I put it on the shelf and never push the button. Right, again. right. But anyway, we'll, we'll get to them down the line. Yeah, that's true. We've got plenty to talk about with that. So, Let me ask, what do you think about that ace figure? <laughs> the ace I, duck? Yeah. Dude, it's so creepy. He's it's, not supposed to have like Ryan Reynolds proportions <laughs> with a duck head. It's, I kept like, it, I mean, it stopped me. I'm scrolling through and it like stopped. I was like, what is that? Because I guess I only remember the old Ace Duck figure, which was kind of, well, it was normal Ninja Turtle proportions and had the bomber jacket, right? Well, and I think that's what the issue is, is humans in the old Ninja Turtles line still had those squatty proportions. Like if you mm-hmm. think about the Casey Jones figure, like, he he didn't have human proportions. He looked. He had those playmates proportions. He wasn't. It, he it wasn't like it was one of the Star Trek figures. You know what I mean? Right. But this Ace Duck is the they. He's got like long. It looks. I don't. It's weird, man. But one thing that bothered me is in the in the actual pre order listing, it didn't list his wings. And that was like one of the big things about the original figure is he had those wings that plugged into his back and looked awesome. But then NECA put up a correction on Instagram that he does come with wings. Yeah, I actually just pulled up the picture of it. I saw the wings. I was like, well, I don't remember seeing those previously. Okay, that (laughs) makes sense. Yeah, they fixed that. And then what's so funny, though, is the Mutagen Man is like tiny in comparison, but these are the cartoon versions. And I think I remember on the cartoon, Mutagen Man was like small. 
Mm -hmm. So I, this, as much as I love mutagen, man, uh, this was a pass for me because that Ace Duck, and I love Ace Duck too. That original Ace Duck figure is awesome. But here's the thing I'm collecting the Super Seven Turtles, and maybe they get to Ace Duck. You know? I'm maybe, sure they will. Yeah. Maybe they get to Ray Filet, which was another one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I love that they're doing this. And I love that, like we said, NECA cares about making sure people get these, but this set was, was not for me. The only, um, the only one of these animated figures I've bought. No, I take it back. I bought two. I bought, uh, metalhead mm -hmm. because he looked so awesome. And I think he was like 25 bucks. Yeah, like it he wasn't, wasn't much. Yeah, the price was not bad and he's huge. So I went ahead and got him, even though super seven is doing one. Uh, and then I bought the Krang Android body. Mm -hmm. Cause Which I is another one that look great. Yeah. Yeah. I never had that when I was a kid and I always wanted it so bad. And then when I saw that it came with the towels, mm -hmm. I was like, I, I gotta get this. And, and it wasn't, I don't think it, I think it was like 30 bucks. I don't think it was crazy. Yeah. It so, was definitely cheaper than I thought it was going to be. So yeah, I got those two just because I was like, man, I, I, want to have those but I, I don't see myself getting a whole lot of it because i'm not i'm not a fan of the turtles cartoon really like i appreciate its place in history and i love that it exists but just personally uh i don't love it not the original cartoon yeah i mean you know at the time it was one of my big big things i watched um but i yeah i don't feel a connection to it as much anymore and really the turtles in general honestly for me like i love the designs um but it's just not something I've gotten back into getting the figures, which is surprising, man. Cause for a little while I had all of them when I was a kid. Well, that's what drives me nuts. And, and that's, uh, for the listeners out there, uh, if you want to check into the needless things podcast, Facebook group, if you want to hit up needless things podcast on Twitter, whatever, uh, we want to hear your toy regrets because I've been dealing with this a lot lately is all the stuff that I used to own that I don't anymore. And the, the worst obviously is my vintage GI Joe collection. Uh, That's the most tragic one. Cause I had the flag, I had everything, uh, and it got put up in the attic and just was destroyed. Uh, um, but I had all of the Ninja turtles, like not, I didn't buy all the like baseball turtles and shit, but I had all of the individual characters. Mm -hmm. and got those back from my parents maybe 15, 16 years ago, maybe a little longer than that. No, shit, shit, probably 20 years ago at this point. But anyway, got those back, had them all in a box, and sold it. Oh, So stupid. So stupid. But, uh, yeah, stuff like that. So, listeners, we want to hear your toy regrets. What have you – what do you regret? getting rid of what do you regret not buying i mentioned that a little while ago too is there something that you had the opportunity to grab that you missed out on and now the cost is astronomical yeah uh but yeah the, i mean ninja turtles it's have just been with me because i got i got into the figures before the cart because the figures came out before the cartoon mm -hmm. i saw the figures i was like this is incredible and then i ended up getting the comics from the comic shop so like the cartoon was almost like a tertiary thing to me. Like I watched it. Don't get me wrong, but the comics and the toys were my thing. And I think that's why it stuck with me is that's where my attachment was because the cartoon for little kids is great, but it, to me, in my opinion, it doesn't hold up like GI Joe and transformers and some of the other cartoons because the humor is so silly. Mm -hmm. You can't cause look, don't get me wrong. Transformers and GI Joe are ridiculous, but they don't have the jokey joke, silly humor the way that turtles did. Yeah. And well, and there's a huge difference, you know, looking at the comics, like the GI Joe comics and the cartoon, while they're different, there's still a similar feeling, you know, somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, turtles is so vastly different. Yeah. It, it might as well be two different properties. Which is what's cool about the turtles is it can be a lot of different things. It can be silly and fun, but it can also be daredevil. Right. Which I'm really, you know, supposedly when they make some, this new movie or whatever, it's going to be much more comics 
yeah. accurate. They're going back to that again. So that would be kind of cool to see. And I don't know. I would be down with, uh, you know, they're doing all kinds of cra- between the Halloween movies and, and, uh, they're doing all kinds of wild things now where they do sequels that ignore mm-hmm. other sequels. If they wanted to do a follow up to the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, I think that would be the coolest thing in the world. Okay. So which sequel would you ignore? Would you let Secret of the Ooze? I would, I would eject now? that. I would eject right. that because if you watch those back to back, Secret of the Ooze is so different in tone oh yeah um the, and and look it's fun but i would do a follow-up to the 1990 movie uh you know i don't know if you try and do something that, well you know i would do i would do a, a 30 years later because why not yeah, dead splinter and <laughs> uh, yeah well i don't know that might be a little heavy because i Middle. still think it'd be fun i don't know there's a, there are a lot of options but i, I would be much more interested in uh, you know, we, we've talked about it tons and tons and tons on the show, but give me Jim Henson's creature shop turtles over CGI turtles any day of the week. And in, and in this day and age, I think a combination of those two things is the way to go. Yeah. Well, and shoot, but turtles have a lifespan of a hundred something years or so. Sure. Yeah. It's, they wouldn't have really aged that much in 30 years. They're early college Ninja Turtles now. It's not like they'd even be like old man turtles. <laughs> graduate school turtle. <laughs> <laughs> God, I bet Donatello would be a terrible graduate school turtle. Oh my gosh. He'd pretentious be so and yeah. Um, so yeah, NECA has been doing really cool stuff with their Turtle Fridays, but then you brought up uh, these videos that they've been putting up with the process of mm-hmm. the April O'Neil figure, which is actually hosted uh, by Judith Hogue, the original April, live action April O'Neil, she's working with NECA not only on the figure, but to produce these behind the scenes looks at how this figure is being created. And it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen as, as somebody who has collected toys and been a fan of toys my entire life. I've never seen a look at the creation of an action figure that was this thorough. Mm-hmm. They talk about everything from uh, her sending pictures of the earrings that she wore in the movie to the designers at NECA, to them sending her, this is what the skirt on the figure looks like, and her saying, well, no, this had a pattern on it, and look, and getting her own old pictures of the costume and sending it to NECA, and then being like, oh, okay, well, now this pattern will be on it. It's Dude, it's wild. Yeah, that's awesome. I like all those behind the scenes. It definitely makes me want to get figures more when they do it. Like, yes. and lo- like that, you know, like we just said with the Sentinel, they've been kind of doing that with the Sentinel some, and it definitely draws me in. Like, well, that was the cool thing about the sail barge yeah. is that they had those looks along the way for the backers of like, this is where we're at, this is the digital sculpt. Okay, now here's the actual sculpt and compare side by side. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is how this is gonna. Oh man, dude, I, I've the the toy making process is so fascinating to me. That's uh, the speaking of that, the Thunder Tank that Super Seven is doing. Oh yeah, um, it totally sold me on that thing when they started showing that claw and what the scale of that thing is, dude. I, I it, mean, I figured it had to be big, but man. That's if, huge. If Brian Flynn hadn't gotten on Instagram and YouTube, um, he did a cool interview with the major wrestling, uh, major, <laughs> major wrestling figure podcast. Uh, you know, if he hadn't gotten out there and shown all of this stuff, I don't know if I would have been compelled to do the pre-order because I ended up doing it. I, I got on eBay. I, I got together a bunch of my stuff that I had put it up on eBay and sold enough to, to pay for the thunder tank. Cause I couldn't justify just out of pocket for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did that. I pre-ordered it. And now I can't wait to see this thing. And super seven is really good. I don't know if you, have you, have you done anything from them? I don't know that they've really hit anything in your wheelhouse. I haven't. And Thundercats has been the one that's really gotten me close. Cause I was a big Thundercats fan when I was younger. Um, and yeah, when they put that tank up 
And then right around the same time, I think, is when they started announcing all the re-releases. Yes, yes. You know, they're going to, you could, it's not a problem to get Lino and Panther right. and all that. Um, it was real tempting, but I mean, it's kind of a room issue at this point. I just don't have anywhere to put it. Oh, dude, I don't know where the Thunder Tank's going to go. I, I have no, a matter of fact, I've got stuff right now. Well, the Boglins, I just opened those Boglins up. I don't know where I'm putting them. I've, I've got a <laughs> lot of things to figure out, but the cool thing about Super 7 is I, I've done a number of their ultimates at this point. And when you do the pre order, every once in a while, you get this email saying, here's the tooling, mm-hmm. here's the paint master, here's the product we got back and we're going to make these changes. Like you get these updates all along the way. And I, I love, you know, people complain about how long the, the period of time between when you place your pre-order and when you get the product. But the thing is, is the only difference between super seven and Hasbro is they're telling you as soon as the product is in development, whereas Hasbro Mm -hmm. gets the product developed and then six months out says, Hey, give us your pre-order. Right. And you don't get all the updates that Super 7 gives you. I, I love Super 7 system, and I honestly wish other places would adopt it because I'm sick of pre-ordering from Walmart and having it canceled. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of these special items like with the G.I. Joe Cobra Island that are Target exclusive that you're just oh. never going to see. Uh, I, I'm tired of that stuff, man. I'm too old for this shit. I'm like Danny Glover. <laughs> I'm the Danny Glover of toy collecting. <laughs> Is it your last day on the job? It is my last fucking day <laughs> on the job, except it never is. Also like Danny Glover. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but so so to wrap up our NECA section, kudos to NECA. Yeah. Um, another Real quick, another thing to mention is that they, they teased a Friday the 13th Part 7 Jason Voorhees months and months and months ago. And then finally, a few weeks ago, revealed it. It went up for pre-order. That should be shipping any day now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have that license back. It's active again. The legal troubles are settled. And hopefully the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff will get settled as well. Uh, and we'll start seeing regular releases of Freddy and Jason again. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, look, those the, those are your cash cows. Yep. The, the sales of Freddie and Jason figures, I'm sure, are part of what allows NECA to do really weird, obscure stuff like the Guillermo del Toro line and things like that. Mm-hmm. And NECA seems to do, like with those, they do enough to differentiate the figures they put back out, um, whether it's being from, you know, Friday the 13th Part 3 or adding oh, yeah. additional stuff. Like, they're real good about adding some value to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like each, I, I've got three, I'm looking at them right now. I've got three Jason Voorhees figures that to the naked eye without their accessories would be almost identical, but they're from three different movies. They have like, each of them has like three different heads, tons of different weapons, different, like they're completely different figures. But at the same time, NECA has cleverly used the same base figure like three times, probably mm. more because I haven't bought all of them. Uh, but I, I think that's great. I love that kind of stuff. Like if you can, if you can fool me into buying the same thing again, kind of like Hasbro did with the carbonized series and the credit series, uh-huh. if you can fool me into buying the same thing again. Good for you. And if that money that you make from doing that makes you buy, makes you able to create some other weird thing that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to make, do it, go for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get off NECA, did you see their announcement today? Uh, what was it? Maybe the not. Universal Monsters oh, are back. Yes. Not only are the Universal Monsters back, but they have the likeness rights for Bela Lugosi. Yep. Which not everybody who does the Universal Monsters has that likeness. Uh, but the Lugosi, uh, what is the wh- wh- whoever controls his business? Yeah, his estate. His estate. Thank you. The Lugosi estate signed off with NECA. So we're getting uh, all of the likenesses. We're getting uh, Boris Karloff. 
Mm-hmm. Lon Chaney Jr., Bela Lugosi, all of the likenesses are going to be on. So they they announced today what well we already knew about Frankenstein. Yeah. But they officially announced today the Mummy, the Wolfman, and Dracula. The the core four. Right. Um. Obviously, the one I'm waiting for is the creature. Yeah, you figured that one's going to be. It's going to happen, and they don't have yeah. any likeness issues with that. They've got yeah. the Universal Monsters license, so basically that's a done deal. But they also announced today, uh, that because all they had shown when they first teased Frankenstein was the black and white version. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if you're if you're an old school Diamond Select collector, the silver screen edition. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> no, dude, I've still got that's that's what's troubling me with these NECA releases is right now I'm looking across the room at my Diamond Select Universal Monsters that are phenomenal figures. Uh-huh. But these NECA figures, the deco's gonna be better, the articulation's gonna be better. They're going to be, I mean, they're going to be modern figures. The sideshow ones that I'm looking at right now are from, you know, 2000. They're mm-hmm. 20 years old, if not older. Uh, these, I, man, and that's what's killing me is what am I going to do? I've already got fantastic figures of Frankenstein, the bride, the creature, everybody else. But this, this is what happens. You know, Diamond Select had the Universal Monsters license for a little while. Um, Playmates did a line. That's a- did McFarlane have it or was he just doing no McFarlane just had McFarlane monsters and those were Uh, great. Yeah. But they were not universal monsters. Uh, lots, you know, every few years, every decade, really somebody new gets the license and does these sort of six ish, seven inch scale figures. Uh, and I end up buying at least the creature all over again. I've got, I've got a freaking. they just did a Mego creature that I had to get cause it looks great. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a different style. The, this one with NECA and diamond select, this is going to be a matter of, do I replace these figures that have been in my collection for 20 plus years now? Uh, cause now that I'm thinking about it, I think those diamond selects might be like, 97 to 99 something yeah like that. i feel like they were yeah that 90 late 90s right when everybody was starting to kind of copy what mcfarland toys was doing so so yeah i'm very excited about these but the big announcement was that yes they're doing a black and white version but a color version will follow mm-hmm. which is what i was waiting for because i look i love that they do the black and white stuff but that's i don't want that as a toy yeah I want I want a color version. So and and since they're doing that, I mean you know I'm going to get it. I can't help myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh so that I think that kind of wraps NECA up. Um let's let's go ahead and hit Hasbro Pulse. Are you ready are you ready? Ooh, lordy. Are you ready to just to cover the incredible magic of Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest? For, okay. <laughs> Or the subtitle, Bamboozle Ryan updating his <laughs> premium membership. Oh, dude, me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, and they, you know, I, I think they very purposely canceled all our free premium memberships. You know, if you don't know, like, it, it seems like, you know, I know you did too, got that premium membership real early. And yeah. they just kept renewing it we didn't pay anything like i think you got it for free in the beginning if you bought a figure or if you made a purchase the the beginning deal was if you made a purchase on the site and then went and signed up for premium it was free yeah and then they and, just kept renewing it yeah well they renewed it after 16 months i think or i think after a year, they were like, we're extending it six more months. And mm-hmm. then at the six months, they were like, Ext- we're extending it another year. But now, this time, they were like, your shit's, your, your time's run out, buddy. Yeah. And, and then, so, hey, this time, and we got nervous. Well, like, because that one they did in September, like, you had to have it to get, what was it, the armor? And, or was that? Uh, right. Well, they did. Had Bane. It was one of the two. Like well, they did the out. armor. They did the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. Um, they they actually because that's the thing is for the first like two years of Hasbro Pulse it was horseshit because the promise had been you'll have early access to convention ex- excuse me to convention exclusives. Mm-hmm. 
And they did that, but everything sold out in like three seconds. So it didn't matter. It was worthless. Uh, but then I guess last year we actually got decent early access to the, uh, what would have been the San Diego comic-con exclusives. Yep. Because what happened is they offered the snake Supreme Cobra commander, um, and a number of other items, they put them up. And if you got them fast enough, they were, they shipped like a month later. But then if you didn't get them in that initial time period, it was actually a pre-order for a second run of those figures. Yeah. People that, are like just now getting the hellfire set. Right. Today. Exactly. Um, so that to me, that was more what the initial promise was of the Hasbro Pulse premium membership. Right. So, yeah. So then they got everybody renew thinking that was going to happen again. Right. And uh, boy, did they not have a single exclusive. <laughs> and like all you could do is if you were a premium member, you could pre-order them right when they announced them during fan fest. Yeah, right. As opposed Which, to waiting till 5 p.m. when they were still plentiful. Right. Like nothing sold out. You could get that stuff everywhere because not a single thing was an exclusive. It well, all and the thing Amazon is Amazon and Prime and everywhere. And and here's here is my biggest problem with Hasbro Pulse is you will find it at retail three months before <laughs> Hasbro Pulse ships it. Oh yeah. Well, so what I'm interested in, one of the announcements they have made recently about the premium membership, and this might end up being worth it, is there's going to be that store exclusive section if you're a right, premium member. Right. And so, you know, everybody knows about the fiasco that is G.I. Joe and Target. Right. And maybe that's going to help with that. I mean, really, besides G.I. Joe, you know, the store exclusive from Hasbro haven't been that hard. The Walmart wave for Black Series was, I mean, I found them. I think a lot of people ended up finding well, them in the end. But here's the thing is I, I found them once. That's true. But that was it. Um. And with the, apparently, and I don't follow Transformers, so I don't know exactly where all that is. Uh, I bought the, have you seen those red series that like, they don't transform? They're yeah. basically Marvel Legends Transformers. Mm -hmm. I bought Optimus and Megatron because I'm a sucker. I can't help myself. Uh, and they're awesome. Those are Walmart exclusive, but they're up on Hasbro Pulse in that retailer partnership section mm -hmm. and apparently uh, and that's most of what's up there now is transformers exclusives but the walmart exclusive hiss tank went up there which i've seen that thing everywhere oh dude yeah every walmart i go to has like 20 of them yeah. which is great because i tell i'll tell you right now 10 years from now i'm going to be kicking myself that i didn't buy like 50 of those hiss tanks yeah uh for the listeners if you're any kind of speculator at all Go buy those his tanks. Uh, so my yeah, my hope is that the Cobra Island figures will show up there because pure luck that I was able to pre-order a Firefly and a buddy of mine found a Viper and sent it to me. I've never seen those in stores. I saw the fire. Well, I got you the Firefly, um, but that might have been the regular one. I don't think that was Cobra Island. No, there's only Beachhead. There's only the I Cobra got you Beachhead. Oh yeah, you life. got me. That's right. Well, that was the first wave was yeah. Beachhead, Baroness, and the Cobra. Okay, Beachhead, Baroness, the Cobra Infantry, and Roadblock. Yeah. Which I saw Roadblock several yeah. times. No yeah. problem there. Baroness, I only saw once the time I bought it. And me and a friend of the show, Carlos, had to wait in a Target for an hour and a half for them to check the truck. And they brought us, they had two of Baroness. We each got one, and that was the end of it. I've never seen one other than that. Uh, the Cobra the Cobra Troopers, uh, me and Phantom Jr. went out the day that they were supposed to be released, which, by the way, means nothing to Target. And for some reason, Target seems to do these things on Sunday. I yeah, ended I up in front of Target at like 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday. Well, that's when I got um, those last Star Wars releases when they did all the theme park stuff. Yep. I just happened to go out on that Sunday because I'm, I'm not collecting most of that. 
but I went out on that Sunday and got all of the Astromech sets that they put out. Uh Um, but anyway, we went out and we managed to get four of the Cobra troopers. I never saw them again. Never saw beachhead. The one you sent me is the only one I've ever seen. Uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So my hope is that that Hasbro pulse premium membership will, you know, maybe they'll do second runs of these and we'll be able to get our hands on this stuff. Yeah. I, I hopefully that'll be worth it. They're going to, they're going to have to do something to get me that 50 bucks back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I paid for the membership because it's certainly, you know, free shipping, you know, they tout, Oh, you get free shipping. But if you buy more than, was it 50 bucks? I think you get free shipping on pulse anyway. So, well, and, and the free shipping thing, like, yeah, that's awesome. Except for the fact that I cancel every pre-order I make because I find it at retail before you guys ever even get it. Yeah. I do that a lot. I pre-order yeah. on Pulse and then I cancel. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's another thing I wanted to do address actually. Um, because obviously over the past year, pre-orders for toys and action figures have become a huge thing. Uh, we go and, my my personal preference is Amazon. If I can pre-order from Amazon, the price is going to be right. They're probably going to get it as early as anybody else. And I, I have never had Amazon cancel a pre-order on me. Walmart and Target are both super sketchy as to when they're going to get it, if they're going to get it, if they're going to cancel it. Uh, I don't like pre-ordering from either of them. Mm-hmm. Then Hasbro Pulse, as we've been talking about, you're going to get it from them, but it's going to be like three months after it starts showing up at retail. So pre-orders have become this really big business, this really huge thing. The thing that I don't understand, though, is people who say, well, Target delays pre-orders, cancel pre-orders, whatever. I'm not pre-ordering from them anymore. Well, that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and make the pre-order. And if you get it, great. If you don't, you don't. But like, why would you not pre-order? Because it's not like you're paying up front. Right. And it's not like you're obligated. If you for, Because the big thing with this for me is the WWE Elite Legends. Mm-hmm. Um, they've, they're Target exclusive. And the pre-orders will go up. And sometimes you find them in Target before your pre-order ship. Okay, fucking cancel your pre-order. Right. Like, it's not a big deal. They're not charging you up front for this stuff, but they are giving you the opportunity to say, if I don't find it at retail before it ships, then I don't have to worry about getting it because they're going to send it to me. Uh-huh. Like, I don't, I don't understand that mentality of I'm not going to make pre-orders from them. And same thing with Walmart, uh, Walmart with, which granted you're lucky if you can even get into the pre-orders at Walmart, like masters of the universe origins. Uh, when those go up, they sell out instantly. Uh, they did the castle gray skull, which today I received my second notice of delay, but I'm not going to cancel that Mm -hmm. because at, as of right now, I still have that pre-order in. And as far as I know, whenever it shows up, they're going to send it to me. I may not see it at stores between now and then. So why in the world would I get all mad and cancel my pre-order? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a secret I've been doing for at least uh, Marvel Legends and Black Series is pre-ordering in person in a GameStop store. Really? They seem to hold stuff like it'll sell out online. You know, everything goes up at like one o'clock. You know, they right, sell out right. real fast. You can go strolling into a GameStop at like 530, 6 o'clock. They pull it up on the computer. Yep, gotcha. Click, 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 and you get them. Wow. Now, they tend to, for some stuff, be kind of like Pulse where they're a little late. Like, I'm still waiting for my Bo-Katan and that wave of Black Series. Right. But they always get them. But you're going to get it. Yeah, you always get it. That, and you know what? That's interesting because it kind of relates to what's going on with Target and Walmart where uh, the Masters Universe Origins Castle Grayskull, it's mm-hmm. showing up in stores now. People are finding it but the online pre-orders are delayed and that's because they have different distribution systems for the online and for the retail stores. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet GameStop works the same way where they have a certain number allocated for those online pre-sales 
But if you walk into a store, like you're saying, that's a completely different allocation. Yep. Very interesting. You just got to watch because we had a new employee at our GameStop and I uh, walked in to get a uh, new commander. Cody had been, you know, he got re-released that archive line. Yeah. Yeah. And so it had been a while and I knew GameStops were getting them. I was like, man, this is just too long. I should have had this by now. And so luckily I walk into GameStop and it was on the shelf and nice. that Cody was hard to get. Yeah. And so like I picked it up and I was like, uh, and I went to the guy checking out. I kind of know the guy. He like looks at it and he was like, weren't you waiting for this? And I said, yeah. And he said, hold on a minute. And he, he said, he goes, oh, this is yours. <laughs> and so apparently they had had a new employee. That oh. didn't know you're supposed to scan for pre-orders. Like, so I got super lucky on that Commander Cody. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. And that's the human element is mm-hmm. always something you have to consider. Yeah, but they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Um, so yeah, Hasbro Fan Fest. I- so let's, well, okay. First, I've got to say this. We will cover the G.I. Joe reveals uh, more in depth on audible interlude, uh, uh, the, the may episode. But since we don't curse on audible interlude, we try and make it a more family friendly show. I will go ahead and say, what the fuck? <laughs> I- Just the movie figures, no new retro, no new. Well, I mean, the movie figures are classified, but like no new regular classified series. That's, it that's all you're giving us is those five movie classified <laughs> figures i kept watching it being like so surely they're going to show like some pinto or something right not even like an update on flint and lady J, which granted is not really necessary because they're hitting retail now but like yeah. no acknowledgement of the wider classified series whatsoever and i get it I know Hasbro wants to focus on the movie stuff, but this is a fan fest. Like moms and dads who don't collect toys aren't watching this thing for their information about where to buy toys. I liked when they had the actor that plays Snake Eyes, who don't get me wrong, he did a decent he job. He, he was so very excited. excited. I do feel like it went on for like an hour and a half. I was like, I, he's you know still going. Um, but it was good. Like I, I, I thought it was really funny how excited he was, like looking at himself and And you're right, it did that that did go on a little long, but at the same time, like his enthusiasm was so legit and so fun to watch. It's fine. It did make me a little more excited to see the movie, honestly. I'm stoked I stoked about the movie. I don't know if I'd ever seen that guy before. Um, I don't know what he's in, but just his excitement. I was like, all right, I'm kind of, I'll see this. Um, but yeah, I, why only movie figures? Like uh, the whole, the way they're handling the classified series in general just dumbfounds me. You already have so many problems with G.I. Joe. You know, it's taken how many years to get back on the shelves and then. You know, the six inch G.I. Joe line was always this white Dream. elephant yes. that was, oh my God. And then it happened and they have just completely mismanaged the whole thing. I I think that they're course correcting a little bit because we, we have talked about this for years and, and you had said if they do six inch Joe's in the traditional <clears throat> real American hero style that you're you're going to be sorely tempted. Yeah. Oh yeah. But that's not what this is. But if you look at the most recent ones, I already mentioned Flint and lady J that are much closer to their original versions yeah. than what we've seen so far. Uh, I'm like that piece of garbage, lady J retro figure. <laughs> well, no. Okay. So I thought the same thing, but shockingly i actually managed to find one 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 i've never seen roadblock i've never seen destro um those retro figures aren't real the first wave like i saw dozens of snake eyes forever Mm -hmm. uh i was able to buy snake eyes and storm shadow at retail but the second and third waves i've i've not seen except for that one lady j and i grabbed it just because i was excited to actually see a new gi joe figure uh, and she's actually pretty good. And she, I, uh, so I saw her and was it Duke? 
Yeah, Screaming Duke, the worst G.I. Joe figure ever made. So I saw those two at a Walmart, and they caught my eye because I was like, huh, that's not Storm Shadow. <laughs> and so I called <laughs> Hoffman, and I was like, so like, do you want this? And he was like, yes, buy it. And I remember looking at it and going, are you sure you want these? He bought the Duke? <laughs> yeah, he wanted you know. Oh, he's gosh, it's so bad. Uh, oh. Yeah. Because I, I saw... They did have, because uh, it's Lady J, Duke, and Cobra Commander, and they did have all three of them at the Walmart that I went to. They had one Lady J, and they had like six Dukes and six Cobra Commanders. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't need that Cobra Commander because I've got like a dozen 25th anniversary style Cobra Commanders. Uh, and the Duke is just the worst. It's like they took all of the worst parts of every Duke that's ever been made and put them together in one, one like... <laughs> ultra mega shit duke <laughs> um but but anyway so that's now that i've gotten all of that off my chest we can have a rational conversation about this on audible interlude in may uh oh. but let's move on to marvel legends oh jesus so i i'm still collecting marvel legends i'm very much cherry picking uh mm-hmm. Unless it's MCU, where I buy pretty much everything that's MCU. Uh, but as far as the comic stuff, I definitely am very picky about what I get. And I didn't see anything that I wanted. So here's what I think has happened with Marvel Legends. Um, I think Hasbro has been kind of screwed by the MCU being so delayed. And it's messed up all the waves and how they're releasing stuff because so, you know, we got the bring on the bad guys wave uh, was the last full wave we knew before fan fest. Um, And then there's this Eternals wave, which has been leaked for months. Like everybody has seen it. There's have we seen images or just the lineup? Oh, we've seen images. Oh, like, see, I haven't. I haven't even seen the images, but they, partially because I don't care that much. They are in production. I mean, people have found them in Hong Kong. Somebody found them in a Walgreens in America. <laughs> um, they they look like garbage. But oh no, we know that wave is already made, and then. You know, the Black Widow wave got released, I don't know, a year before the movie, I guess, basically, right, right. at this point. And then the Shang-Chi wave, this is nuts. The Shang-Chi wave gets leaked about two weeks ago. Um, and then I sure as hell saw it in Target today. Well, the, yeah, they're showing up now. I saw it. Like, it was there. It was sitting on the shelf. They're street dated for April 25th. Oh, but wow. people were finding them before the trailer even came out. And that wave has not been announced by Hasbro. So, because I don't think they can. Right. They didn't even announce announce it on this, did they? Yeah. And so now you've got the Shang-Chi wave that's out, which makes me really mad because it is a full wave of basically movie figures right. with a high build a figure, a comic hide build a figure. Yeah, that's bizarre. Oh, it's terrible because I want that stupid hide. And don't get me wrong, the figures themselves, they did look really good. Well, you you get well, we'll do one of the other things because I want the figures. I don't care about the hide. So we'll we'll work that out. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. So they, you know, those I'll, I'll get bad. I'll get the figures and uh I'll send you the hide. Uh, so what that leaves Marvel Legends at, they have two fully produced ways that they can't show. Right. And so on Hasbro Fan Fest, they showed this Iron Man wave <laughs> that look, I you know, Ursa Major it, it's a bear head on the Sasquatch body. Now it's Ursa Major. Is it though? I don't I don't feel like that's the Sasquatch body, is it? Yeah, it is. It looked um, like it was thicker to me. They put additional pieces on the shoulders. Oh, okay. Um, to where the head connects. But yeah, I mean, it's it's that Sasquatch body. Okay, and okay. there's one or two, you know, I pre-ordered the Ultron because that Ultron looks amazing. Yeah, that Ultron does look good, especially with all the Kirby crackle in his mouth. Yeah. And then I ordered uh what's the other one? Oh, Riri. I ordered uh Riri in her Ironheart costume. Um 
which I tell you, if you want to speculate, I would get a Riri because yeah, I would bet money she will be who the MCU puts in next. Oh, for sure. And so you know they did that one, and then but like some hologram other- Iron Man. I mean that that should be like a retailer exclusive or something. That shouldn't be a mainline figure. Well, it's one of those again. Like you know, she he goes with Riri, and it was kind of that period after Civil War II where he was doing that, but it didn't last that long. And it's been a year and a half now, two years since that happened well, in the comics. It's a, it's a cheap redeco, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, Dark Star is cool. Um, I'll probably end up buying Dark Star if I see her. And people have wanted that mod, that modular Iron Man. A lot of people wanted that. Well, here's the thing, though. That modular Iron Man, I 100% want that, but I want it to be a deluxe figure right. with all of the modular parts. Yeah. Like, I don't want just this Iron Man. Like, that almost seems lame to me. Yeah. Now, who's the other? Oh, Stealth Iron Man. He's the other one in that way. Which is cool. And he, yeah. comes, with, and he comes with the Tony head. Yeah. Which is cool. Uh, what they need to do is just put out a pack of suit bodies. I'm sick of all these heads that I need another suit body for. <laughs> which who would have thought, you know, after DC who would have Universe. Who want a suit body ever? <laughs> but you're yeah. right. I need a I suit actually, body. I actually, speaking of suit bodies, I actually just bought um, the WWE Legends Ultimate Warrior figure. Mm-hmm. Because it's from his Hall of Fame speech. And it's Warrior's head, but he's wearing a suit. And I bought that to put a Ric Flair head on it. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's like an 80s NWA Ric Flair. Nice. Suit bodies are not to be underestimated, is They're what I'm not. saying here. What was there? Oh, they teased the Hazlab. The next Hazlab is Marvel Legends again. Which is either Galactus or the Fantasticar. If just, it's Galactus, I'm probably not interested. But if it's the Fantasticar, I'm a little tempted. Yeah, that's kind of how I am. Like, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be Galactus. It, and it, honestly, it should be Galactus. Yeah. And, you know, there's all those rumors that the next retro wave after kind of X-Men and Spider-Man is going to be the Fantastic Four. Well, they already put out that doom on retro packaging. Right. With with the old school graphic of Fantastic Four on it. So, I mean, they have to do Fantastic Four. Right. Because they need to re-release Dragon Man. Dragon Man now is probably up there as like the most expensive. Yeah, yeah. Toy Biz, um, and I'm sure they'll do Mole Man. Um, yeah, they got my gosh, they've got to do a Mole Man. What if what if the Haslab is Fin Fang Foom? I, that would be another one they may want to think about. That Fin Fang Foom goes for a ton of money. Even and, and the it's, is it that great? Oh, I love it. Oh, it, like, it still holds up. Oh yeah, it's great. okay. Now it doesn't have the purple shorts, which I hate. I wish it did. <laughs> put the shorts on the giant. What if dragon. Haslab? What if theirs had an option for purple shorts? Ooh, that would be very tempting to get another Fing Fang film. Ooh uh, man! But I tell you, that knockoff Fing Fang film. There's one, you know, China sells. The, oh yeah, the yeah. Knockoffs. Even the knockoff Fing Fang film goes for like two hundred plus dollars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's nuts. So, yeah, I mean, Marvel Legends just it's in a weird place right now. And I yeah. don't know. I think until the MCU gets back on track. Oh, and that's the other thing they're being real weird about is this the MCU, the show wave. So they keep like Yeah, why how in the world did they not announce that? Because even I, and I, I don't follow Marvel Legends very closely, but even I am aware of this this uh, Disney plus wave. So what it looks like and what probably is happening, you know, they've announced Scarlet Witch vision. Well, they Aaron Zemo, they haven't even announced Scarlet Witch yet. Oh, that's right. She's just in a weird picture, right? They announced vision and Zemo and that's it. So someone got a hold of one of them in package. Oh, really? They just had a picture of the front of the package, and you can see that the Build-A-Figure part 
is Sam's wings from Bucky and Winter Soldier. Right, and that's what I had seen is that, yeah. is that his wings were like, like Vulture from that yeah. Spider-Man wave. So I think what they're doing, my guess is they can't show that yet. because Oh, because he doesn't have them yet. He won't have it until next week, or I guess for mm. listeners, a week right. ago. Um, and then I kind of wonder if they're going to hold off. I think the original rumors were the way finishes off with some figures from Loki. Um, oh, wow. So they may have to wait until Loki comes out. Holy shit. To show this whole thing. So I don't know. It's they're just the MCU is screwing them. They got to figure out something because they're getting killed at retail right now. Yeah, because the the MCU stuff is all in line with the comic book stuff, so it's not like they can just forge ahead. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. fair. So come like November, we're probably going to... And I'm sure they've got a uh, Doctor Strange. I mean... Yeah, Multiverse already. of Madness has got to be lined up, ready to go. Yep. Wow. Um, One last thing I want to mention real quick. They did finally showed uh, in-game Thor. Oh, yeah. And one of the interesting things that was said, uh, I think his name is Dwight. He's my favorite guy that works on Marvel Legends, the guy mm-hmm. with the beard. Yeah. Uh, although I love all those guys. They're great. They're very forthcoming. They're very they're they're as transparent as they can be. Uh, and he pointed out, like, you know, sometimes it's better when we have to wait for a figure because if you look at like uh Thanos and the the black what are they called? The Black Order. The Black Order. Like those MCU versions were inaccurate mm-hmm. that first came out, and they had to correct them all with that box set. Which, by the way, listeners, if you're sleeping on that box set, you better jump on that shit because I got it for Phantom Junior, and it's amazing. Considering the price, you get like it's great and they're corrected versions of the black order it's a great great box Uh, set you essentially get two build a figures in that yes thanos and uh what's his giant obsidian yeah yes yes uh and they are corrected and movie accurate uh so if you haven't gotten on that as a matter of fact i didn't get that set for myself because i've got the original releases but right now i'm sitting here thinking like i probably should get that uh but anyway he pointed out that like sometimes it's better to wait because then you have the final uh you know so much of this stuff is is uh cgi now that hasbro doesn't know exactly what these finished character models are going to look like Mm-hmm. So in game Thor, if he had come out when in game came out would have been inaccurate. Uh-huh. This figure, since it's coming out a year later, two years later, whatever the heck it is now is completely movie accurate and looks great. Uh, and then the other thing that they showed that I loved was the eye of Agamotto. That thing is crazy. Cool. It's awesome. And it's 50 bucks. I, mean, I- that's a steal. I don't know how that magic time gym works when they take it out and he was explaining it at first. And I was like, Oh, I'm sure it's just like, that's you know, right. kind of dim. It won't be that big of a deal. And then on the video, he took it out and I was like, Oh my God, like that thing is bright. And he's just holding his hand. And they were like, yeah, it lasts about 10 minutes. In that's 10 insane. minutes. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm all, and I'm not, I got the infinity gauntlet prop or it's not really a prop replica, but like, <laughs> the wearable infinity gauntlet that they made. Mm-hmm. And it's really fun. It's really cool. I'm glad I got it, but I'm not huge into that stuff, but that eye of Agamotto, like it looks so cool. I, and, and yes, for even like 50 bucks is a lot of money, but for that, I feel like 50 bucks is a steal. Oh, I totally agree. Like all the electronics it has and all the junk it does, like that thing's really cool. And those helmets, like, have you ever seen one of the helmets in real life? Dude, I've got, um, okay, so I've got the first order stormtrooper helmet Mm -hmm. that I got. Amazon did a, what are their gold box or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. It was like 35 bucks. And I was like, well, shit, I can't pass it up for that. But the fucking faceplate is already yellowing oh really it's a fantastic helmet but that the plastic is already yellowing on the faceplate um i got 
one of the X-Wing fighter helmets. I don't, I think it's Poe Dameron. Yeah, it's Poe Dameron's yeah, helmet. Pose. With all the sound effects and shit. Mm-hmm. I got that from uh, Burlington Coat Factory for 35 bucks. It's incredible. Yeah, GameStop had a bunch of them for like 35 bucks last week. Like, yeah, Ant-Man they, and because they're yeah, big, they have to clear that stuff out. Um, mm-hmm. I paid full price for the Boba Fett helmet because it's Boba Fett, and I'm like, shit, I gotta get it. And it's it's amazing. I want that Mandalorian helmet. Uh, and then I got the Cobra Commander helmet. I was gonna say, did you get I saw those yesterday I, at the store? I actually. haven't opened it yet because my plan had been to do an unboxing on the Needless Things YouTube channel. And I just haven't been in a spot where I felt like doing a face unboxing because, you know, everything I do is just my hands mm-hmm. opening shit up. Um, but, yeah, I got the Cobra Commander helmet. Uh, those, those helmets, like, if you pick one character that you absolutely love and just get that, it's totally worth it. And, that dude, that did you see the Wedge helmet? Yes. Looks that awesome. Green aid looks really nice. Oh, man. Yeah, those are... Those are nice pieces. I, I I can't imagine collecting all of them, but Never. picking one out from time to time or being a dickhead who doesn't actually support the line and waiting till they go on clearance. Right. You, you can get that Deadpool head for like 40 bucks right now. Right. Right. Which, which I think we called pretty early on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. So speaking of Star Wars stuff, I think it's probably time to move on to the Black Series. And you're like, I, every once in a while, they throw a character out and I'm like, oh shit, I got to have it. Like Bo-Katan, um, which I, I have, I ordered from Big Bad mm-hmm. and, uh, Big Bad got her pretty early. I've, I've had her for a couple weeks now. Um, so every once in a while I see a, a black series figure that I have to have, but I'm not collecting them like you are. So what is your... What's your outlook on these Black Series reveals? Because to me, it seemed pretty slim. Well, and here's the problem. They did this thing on, what, it was like April 13th or something. Right. And they've already said there's a big May 4th event. And so yeah. I think they were just holding back. I mean, everything, and they showed us packaging on the wave that they had already announced um, at the end of their last big Star Wars panel thing. They had shown here's who's coming. And it was just a picture of Lando and Orsang and tech and Casca. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of like, well, you know, here they are. We told you about them already. They did show zero. That was the first time we'd seen zero from the Mandalorian. So okay. that was a new one. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it's stuff we knew about already. Um, I, I, they're going to hold off for May the fourth and push it all out. And they kind of said that um, they're going to announce a bunch of the, the, what's this year? The 50th anniversary uh, Lucasfilm. Right. That's like an ongoing thing. Yeah. Those those are like Mace Windu, um, all the Phantom Menace carded stuff. That's all hitting like now. Yeah. And I've seen them. God, they look good. I don't need those figures. Cause did I, you, did you ever think you'd have nostalgia for that Darth Maul card back? I, you know, it's awesome. Was, isn't it? It looks so good. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> They did. They updated that Qui-Gon and I'm kicking myself. I wish like I cannot update a figure I bought two years ago, but man, that new Qui-Gon with the face scan looks so much better. Um, I, I hate it. I hate that kind of stuff, but I also love it because there's just no way around the fact that every few years toy technology improves. And it's like we were talking about with the diamond select universal monsters versus the NECA universal monsters. It's just the nature of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so Black Series, you know, they just didn't show very much. Uh, TVC, they showed a little more. Um, which, is, which is my wheelhouse. So I right. was very happy to see. Um, I don't know how much I like the Luke Skywalker Hoth. I don't know because mm-hmm. the one I've got is fine. But the Han Solo Vintage Collection, the indoor one, is a massive upgrade, not just the the digital printing on the face, but his coat. I went and looked at mine, the one that I've got, and the coat on this new one is so much better. Yeah. Uh, same yeah. thing with the Leia. The indoor Leia looks phenomenal. Um, Speaking of vintage or the uh, cloth goods, 
that cape on the Black Series General Lando. Oh, dude. Is a little over the top. <laughs> it's like, I don't it remember is. Lando floating around on this like four meter long cape. <laughs> well, here's the thing though. If you were still, and, and uh, for the listeners, I'm going to throw this out there. Next week on the Needless Things podcast, our head of research, Ryan Schwuck, will be returning and we will be discussing the 1995 relaunch of the Star Wars toy line. Uh, I have been collecting three and three quarter inch or one eighteenth scale, whatever you want to call it, Star Wars figures since 1995. I never quit because I'm an insane person. So if you know the general Calrissian uh, three and three quarter inch figure that has been released many times, mm-hmm. his cape is shit. Yeah, it is. The clasp on it is like a piece of blue elastic that looks horrible. <laughs> So I when I that. saw this black series version, I was like, can we just get that at half size, please? <laughs> I loved this cape, but you're right. It's maybe a little much. It's a little much. So who uh, who are you going to vote for, for the fan choice re-release? What were the, I can't remember what the options were. It's uh let's see. It's Ahsoka. No on Ahsoka because they released her freaking twice in just a couple of years because they did her back when how dumb does Hasbro have to be to release two different scales of figures under the same name because they were doing Marvel Legends at 118th scale and 112th scale they were doing Black Series at 118th scale and 112th scale but we got a Black Series Ahsoka and then a Walmart exclusive Ahsoka, like immediately mm-hmm. the same figure. I don't want that again. Let's see. Who else do we got? Uh, the hover take pilot from Rogue One. I've got it. A week way from Return of the Jedi. Uh, Republic Trooper from the old Republic game. Um, the extended universe, which looks really cool. And then, uh, oh, what's his name? Starkiller. I see I probably the Republic trooper, but I've, I've got, I've already got all those figures. So I, I don't really have a dog in this hunt because like I said, I've been collecting this scale for 26 years. Yeah. So, my money, my money's on star killer. I bet that's who wants. I, you know what? That's probably the best choice. But I bet Ahsoka wins. Uh, I my thing with voting for Ahsoka though, I mean it's Clone Wars Ahsoka, but with her show and stuff, they're going to put out so much Ahsoka stuff. Oh yeah, we're we're a hundred percent going to get a Mandalorian Ahsoka. Yeah. Which, by the way, did you see that Hot Toys one? Oh, that thing is nice, dude. I hate Hot Toys reveals because I'm always like, because they did that Boba Fett as well. Oh god, that's like, even better. I was like, and I hate shit. Boba Fett. Shit. I am absolutely getting that. And then it was like $375 or some shit. And I was like, I'm not getting that. Cause because there will be a Marvel Legends version of it. Oh yeah. And that'll be that'll be good enough. I don't I'm I don't need that. Uh so here was a big vintage collection reveal that has not gone up for pre-order yet. Uh the X Wing with Anton Mer- excuse me, Antoc Merrick, which uh-huh. is Gary Oldman's character from Rogue One. Yeah, that thing looks nice too. Oh, dude, those those vintage collection X Wings are incredible. Uh, I got the Poe Dameron one. It's worth and and I know they're uh, what are they a hundred bucks or whatever they are mm-hmm. worth every penny. They're fucking great. I'm gonna pre-order this thing. As soon as it goes up on target, hopefully I'll not miss it. Uh, maybe uh, you'll be able to get it on pulse. Who knows? Well, yeah, who knows what's going to go down with that? But the the like, I love having these incredible X wing toys. But the fact that it's a Gary Oldman Star Wars figure, mm-hmm. that's something special that puts it over the top. Yeah, and you know, I'll say that the Star Wars guys, their team, they do a really good job on their presentation and. You know, I thought it was good. They're they're going to address a lot of the TVC concerns of the fans. Apparently, they're I, look. I can't. 
And TVC I mean, fans, they are, oh, Lord, they're, they're, they're an angry people. Well, here's the thing is that we all feel so entitled because Star Wars started off at this three and three quarter inch size. But the six inch scale has taken over. Mm-hmm. Black Series is where it's at. That's what people are buying. That's what the mass market is buying. The fact that we're still getting any three and three quarter inch stuff at all is honestly just generosity on Hasbro's part. So whatever, yeah. whatever bones they throw me, I'm happy to get. Mm-hmm. I think as long as they keep putting out those little play sets, if they'll knock the price down a little bit. Oh, dude, I just ordered. So this is how dumb I am. They they did the uh, the Bespin carbon freezing chamber <laughs> play set. Well, um, they, did da- ha- they did half of it's, it's best not, in garbage it's place. not really a play set it's a diorama so they <sighs> did that and i was like i'm not paying what 70 dollars or whatever it was i'm not paying 70 dollars for this giant thing that i don't even have room for but on target's website a couple weeks ago it was 35 bucks and i ordered two of them well yeah you got two i'll pay Seventy dollars for two giant things that I don't have room for. Uh, and the uh, awesome. Here's here's the really awesome part, though, is this was about two weeks ago. Uh, Target's estimated delivery date was last Thursday, uh, which was the fifteenth or sixteenth. I don't remember. Um, and it has not arrived yet. And it is currently in like Minnesota and estimated to arrive on the 23rd, but target their tracking is still showing it as arriving on like the 16th. (laughs) So when you order from target, just be ready to be patient. They must uh, doesn't give a shit about target. They must have hired the old Maddie collector team. They're gonna, oh my gosh, right? <laughs> they're gonna send it to that town, Arizona, whatever yep. town in Arizona that was. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. Okay, just real quick, I want to mention the fact that it seems that uh, Hasbro now has the 112 scale Fortnite license. Like, it's not just the special release figures, yeah. it seems like they have the license now. Uh, I don't really know anything about Fortnite at all, but my son does and was very excited for all of the things that they showed because we, we sat down and watched the, the presentations together. He was very excited about all the Fortnite stuff. So that's all I've got to say. Well, and and I meowsles with the weight bench was a big hit. <laughs> I don't know. So that's yeah. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh. Oh, you know what else? Fan Fest I want to hit on. Oh, yeah. What? The Optimus Prime toy. Good okay. Lord. I never watched the video for that. What? Tell me about this thing. It It's probably the coolest toy I've ever seen. Like, really? It, I highly recommend watching the videos on this thing. Okay. So, you know, they had Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes did the kind of unveiling and demonstration on this thing. Oh, I didn't even know that. Cause they're all they're like Kevin Smith's masters of the universe guy right now. Yeah. So they had them do it. So, you know, the big thing out of the way, it is a $700 optimist. What the fuck are you talking about? It is $700. What? This thing transforms by itself. Like it is a full on robot. And like, and not like, you know, I mean, they've had Transformers toys that transform before. Yeah, you push yeah. a button, they pop. Oh, no. right. This thing is a legit turning around, like, looks like what happens when you use a real Transformer. It looks flawless. You could talk to the stupid thing. Like, <laughs> you tell it, like, you say, like, Optimus Prime, convert, which is weird. You say convert, convert not transform. A lot yeah, what? I don't know. But it Autobots, trans- convert and roll out. No <laughs> yeah, I, the only thing I can think of is maybe if you say transform to it, it does something else because oh, okay. it, like, you can talk to it. Like, you say, like, Optimus Prime, say hello. And the damn thing, like, waves and starts is it talking. Peter, is it Peter Cullen? Yes, it is the most amazing. And you can control it with an app. Like, it's one of the coolest things All I've right, ever I, seen. I need to go watch this, I guess. 
And I, and I was watching it and I was like, man, I'm going to have to get this. And so I logged on to Pulse and saw $700 oh. and said, never mind. And it's some like partnership they're doing with a robotics company. Like, okay. this is like a legit thing, but it lights up. It does all this crazy stuff, but it's so amazing. We, we've been worried about like Terminators and Skynet and all that, but what's actually going to kill us is this little Optimus Prime. Well, I, you know what I thought of is, uh, what was that movie? Uh, S- small soldiers. Small soldiers. Yeah, I like yeah. watching. I was like, dude, this is some small soldier shit. Like <laughs> that thing's gonna gain sentence and <laughs> attack me with an energy axe at night. Uh, so last, I think last bit of toy news I wanted to cover. Um, uh, real quick, I just want to mention this company called Plastic Meatball. Uh, they're doing figures of Joe Bob Briggs and Darcy the Mail Girl. And they have also picked up the license for, have you seen Psycho Gorman yet? No. Dude, you need to watch it. All right. You really need to watch it. So this movie called Psycho Gorman, which I'm not going to say anything about other than everybody needs to watch it. Uh, Plastic Meatball is doing sort of uh, retro style, five points of articulation figures for it. Uh, Very cool little company. Uh, They're not over... Like their stuff is not mad overpriced. They're not reaching beyond their means. Just doing some really cool, neat stuff. Keep an eye on these guys. This is potentially like the next Super 7. So so I just wanted to put that in everybody's head. Plastic meatball. Really cool stuff. Uh, So we've gone over our hour, but I don't really give a shit because there are two topics of conversation that Ryan specifically I had to have with you. And the first one is just a note that I made that says, because you you know, well, I don't know if you know or not. Uh, I'm trying to rebuild my vintage G.I. Joe collection. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, all the G.I. Joe stuff I had when I was a kid got put up in the attic uh, when I moved out. And Georgia attic heat destroys ABS plastic. Mm-hmm. So it was all just ruined. Uh, the only thing that I've got left is a Destro figure and my terror drone. So you've got brittle O-rings everywhere. Oh, uh, well, not even the O-rings though. The plastic itself will like shatter and fall apart and warp. Like all the vehicles and everything were just, it, it was all worthless. So I'm rebuilding that collection right now. And I'm actually having a really great time. Uh, I have gotten to the point where vintage toy collecting is something that to a degree I enjoy more than modern toy collecting because right now I'm rebuilding that GI Joe collection. And I'm also very, very slowly collecting in humanoids. Mm -hmm. And what's rewarding about that is however much of it exists, that's it. Mm. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen in the future within humanoids and GI Joe from the eighties, because I know how much of it is out there is what's out there. They're not making anything new. So like once I get that 1984 storm shadow, I'm done with that storm shadow. Like there's not going to be a better version. They're not going to upgrade. That's it. So what I was going to ask you is I don't think there are any vintage toy lines that you collect but is there anything that you would consider or any vintage toy lines that you have thought about collecting? I don't collect any vintage toy lines. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about toys we have from when we were young and I only have two left. Um, I've got my original Chewbacca and I have my Mumra. And oh, nice. Now, Mumra has no headpiece or cape or anything. It's just <laughs> Mumra. Um, I don't know. You know, the Marvel Legends on the retro card have kind of scratched that itch some of getting some of that stuff. Um, and Humanoids would be really um, tempting. I was a big fan of those. And it's uh, a what, small collection, too. Like, it's, it's one series, and mm-hmm. that's it. Oh, you know, uh, what were those? Uh, what were the sec, the insect ones? Sectars. Sectars would be also really okay. So earlier in the show, we talked about Boglins. Timothy Clark also created sectars. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. yeah, those would be, I think, really tempting for me to get. Another toy vintage. I think if I saw it in a good 
shape I would be really tempted to buy is the that Rambo playset. Oh, the tower. Yeah. Like when yeah. I was a kid, man, I was real into that thing. Um, Dude, that, that, that Rambo cool. line was great. I think yeah. super underappreciated. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of some other lives. Cops would be really like if I saw like a big lot of those old cops toys. Yeah. With the uh uh what are they called? The, the like cat know, guns. The cat, that's what it is. With the yeah. use with that red cap. Yeah, kids the rolled caps. Yeah, kids don't know the pleasure of the rolled caps. No, they don't. Hitting them with a rock to see what would happen. Because we we had well, not only did we have like the cat pistols and stuff, which granted you can still buy those at like Stone Mountain and stuff, but like we had uh Thunder Punch He Man that had the caps. Mm-hmm. The cops and crooks figures had the cap guns. Like that stuff was that was great. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely probably look at some of that stuff. But you're right, like it's hard sometimes when I think about like Marvel Legends and Black Series, like there's there's no end to this and at some point <laughs> right at some point i'm gonna have to pull out of it and i, I don't know i mean I, I definitely don't get now black series i get everything but marvel legends i don't complete like i used to um well and the other problem with black series is what we were just talking about where like you've already got qui-gon but now there's a better qui-gon mm-hmm. and how do you look at the qui-gon on your shelf knowing that there's a better digitally printed Qui-Gon, like with the digital face mm-hmm. out there, like that kind of stuff drives me nuts, man. Yeah. Like having that full DC universe classics collection. Oh, it's beautiful. I like that too, man. That thing is perfect. And you know, like, it's done. Yep. There there's... will never be another DC universe classics figure. Uh, I still I think... have that stupid Vixen, but eventually I'll pull the trigger and go. <laughs> Someday. All right. The other thing, the the other non news thing that I wanted to discuss is the Detolf debate. Ah, uh, yes. So I can see mine from here. Anybody who's been in the Phantom Zone, uh, and and at some point I, I get requests for this like weekly. At some point I will do a YouTube tour of the Phantom Zone. Uh, but my preference is the wall mounted shelves. Mm-hmm. where you you mount the brackets on the walls and then line the shelves up however many you need however you know whatever depth whatever and i i've i've been thinking about this a lot lately and i've realized that i want my toy collection to feel like some like arcane mad scientist laboratory where there's just wild stuff everywhere everywhere you look there's some new weird collection uh, and that it's out and mm-hmm. open and accessible. Because when I was a kid, I loved going to museums, but I hated that everything was behind those glass windows. It drove me crazy. All those cool little, like you'd see like a diorama of the Alamo, but it was behind this glass or you'd mm-hmm. see like cavemen and a saber tooth tiger behind this glass. I hated that. Uh, and the Detolfs to me, I think they look fancy as fuck. I think anybody who wants to put their collection in that stuff, I think that's great. But I don't want my stuff closed off behind glass. That's just not my my style. That's just not what I want in my collection. I So I've got kind of a mix. Um, my Mezcos are on shelf on a wall. So they're kind of all together on the bracketed shelves, but then, you know, I do have one, two, three, like eight D tops, I guess. Um, and they do, they look really good. They put them right together and they're all organized. Um, I like the look of it for those. I don't interact like the Mezco. I'm more likely to interact with, like I'll get one down and mess with it versus the legends and black series. I don't really do. Um, that's what I feel like is a Detolf kind of just closes it off. And also my concern, because I did consider putting my vintage Joe collection in Detolfs, but then my other concern is like, well, how does that fit? How much, how much can you fit into one? That is an issue. Like I'm looking right now, like I'm probably going to have to get another Detolf for the Legends Heroes and probably another Black Series Detolf. And Um, and how do you determine how they're sectioned off? Because you can only fit 
so many into one. So how do you decide like this is the return of the Jedi detail? Mm. This is the Clone Wars detail or, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I do. Um, everyone's I've had to redo it. You know, we just moved into this house. It's just been about five years now. Um, and so I was real specific when I put them in there, like, okay, this is the X-Men area. This is the Avengers area. Um, but Black Series, as it's expanded so much, I'm running into issues where, like, my shelf for Clone Wars and Rebels is overfilling. And so right. I, I haven't figured out exactly what to do. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to – I'm probably going to end up having to put some shelves down here. Um and, you know, our one thing I do like about the Detolves kind of as our kids have gotten older, um, they, you know, we, our basement, it's got my toy collection, but it also has like the movie screen and yeah. the bar and stuff. And so as my kids are teenagers, you know, them and their friends are down here and I get a little prickly old man about don't touch my toys. Yeah. <laughs> and so the, the, the Detolves definitely help with that. I tell you, shutting that door sometimes is a stressful experience, though, because you'll get one, especially some of those female Marvel Legends figures that they've gotten better, but are a pain in the ass to stand up. And then you'll shut the door and you'll shift it and they all fall and knock into each other. Oh, it's Dude, terrible. That new, um, the newest Jean Grey that they just put out mm-hmm. won't stand up for shit. The Walgreens Emma Frost, I think, it is the worst they've done. I don't have that one. She um, just won't stand. Now I do like the details are nice when you put them um, together. Like so if you have a couple in a row, it makes a shelf on top. Right, right. And that lets me like on top of it, I've got like my build of figures, and then I keep some of the San Diego and the box sets in the box. Like yeah. that Hellfire set looks amazing. I'm not opening it, which you know. It's hard because I really want to pull that Emma Frost out, but the box looks so good. It looks so good on top of a Detolf that I I think they look very very nice. And I uh, you know you see online people that that's all they've got lining the walls. Mm-hmm. I think it looks really really classy, but that's just not what I want out of my collection. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. I you know I have a little like I have a little bit. My DC classics they're on just regular shelves. We kind of had built in, and I do like the open. Now they gather a lot more dust, and yeah, the detolfs are nice about that. Yeah, and that that is definitely a problem. I'll tell you one thing that's made a big difference on the wall mounted shelves is I found on the container store uh, they actually have these risers that are mm. extendable risers. They go from uh, 12 inches to 24 inches, maybe. Mm-hmm. And they're perfect for action figures. I've got some of my Ninja Turtles on them. All of my MCU figures are on them now. And then my vintage Joes I've got on these things. And they're just absolute. I'll put up uh, for the listeners. If you want to follow needless things podcast on Instagram, uh, I'll put some pictures up and you guys can check them out. Uh, they're fantastic. And they're, like 10 bucks, I think maybe, but they're way better than those, uh, spice rack. Yeah, I was gonna say, the spice packs, what I used for a while, they those never are, work right. the little, yeah, the little bumps on those are, are terrible. These are f- totally flat. Uh, they're white, but you can spray paint them whatever color you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're awesome. Well, Ryan, I think that about wraps it up for, for general toy talk. Uh, next week, we will be back to talk about the 1995 Kenner Star Wars relaunch. Buff Luke Skywalker time. Yeah, that's right. Hey, well, okay, here's something. Well, you know what? I can't announce it yet. Uh, more to come on that line next week. Ryan, thanks for coming on and uh, just running down what's going on in toys. Awesome. Oh, let me do my plug. I actually have something to plug for once. Oh, yeah, bring it. I usually never do. Um, I co-host XQ Chapter 66 here on the Needless Things family of podcasts. Uh, me and Beth and Chad talk about Star Wars books. Uh, there's some really great stuff coming out soon with the new Thrawn and High Republic stuff. So check it out. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. We'll talk to you soon. All righty. I completely forgot to mention this in the intro, but I had enough to talk about, right? 
So I, I got hit up via Instagram today for uh, a cooperative advertising opportunity, which anytime the word opportunity is thrown at me, I'm immediately suspicious. Uh, but I received a message from an independent operative who told me that she had a contact who would be interested in advertising on my podcast. Very exciting, right? This has worked out really well for me in the past. It's not like uh, I got dicked over by any companies with this sort of thing, uh, recent memory. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, so she said, contact Smooth My Balls on Instagram and that they would be interested in me reviewing their product. So I DM'd Smooth My Balls and said, I am very interested in scrotal hygiene. I would love to support your product. Uh, they got back to me with a form uh, letter from a representative named Nick. And I got to tell you right now, if I am promoting a ball shaving product, I am not going to use somebody named Nick or, or I'm going to be like Nick look Nick and balls have a bad connotation when shaving is involved so why don't you call yourself Stuart or Randolph or Mickey or something uh, but anyway Nick sent me a, a form message with a link to, to a free to how to get my free sample kit so I could shave my balls and talk about how great it was on the show uh, and then I got to the bottom of the thing and it was like so now just send us $60 and we'll send you your free $60 plus shipping and we'll send your free kit so needless to say you guys are not going to have to hear about how smooth my balls are because they aren't I love you guys You have been listening to a Needless Things podcast. You can follow Needless Things on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at needlessthingspodcast.com. Love you. Mean it. Uh-huh.